Here you are, you've got this asset that, you know, has outperformed every other asset in the history of the financial markets. I mean, on a 15 year, 10 year, five year basis, whatever you want to look at, I mean, you can find some short periods of time where obviously it did not outperform or it had a big correction. But, but in general, if you take a long enough window on it, it's been the top performing financial asset kind of ever. We're still climbing a big wall of FUD. And, you know, it's still the people, I mean, there are a lot of people I know when I talk about buying Bitcoin and they look at the price, they say, you know, and I'd recommended it to them all along the way. And they go, well, I missed it. I should have bought it at 30. I should have bought it at 15. Well, I can tell you what, when I was buying it at 1500, I thought I should have bought it at 100. You know, and, and no matter what price you buy it at, you always can look back five or 10 years and say, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm too late. But back again to the big picture numbers, 300 trillion, 1.4. You're not too late. Bitcoin, since its inception, has indeed outstripped traditional investment assets in terms of growth, not just in value, but also in influence and adoption. As we navigate through the complexities of the current financial year with its economic uncertainties, Bitcoin's resilience and its proponents' unwavering faith in its potential highlight an interesting phase of maturation within the crypto space. Leopard's insights come at a crucial time when the crypto industry is witnessing both unprecedented growth and significant regulatory scrutiny. His belief that it's never too late to invest in Bitcoin aligns with a broader sentiment of long-term growth potential that many investors share. This perspective is crucial, especially when considering the volatile nature of cryptocurrencies. The emphasis on a long-term horizon for investment in Bitcoin is not just a strategy for risk mitigation, but a testament to the belief in the transformative potential of cryptocurrencies. The idea that the window of opportunity is fast closing for Bitcoin investments might seem at odds with its inherent volatility. However, this notion underlines the urgency of recognizing Bitcoin's growth trajectory amidst increasing institutional adoption and broader acceptance as both a store of value and a medium of exchange. The narrative of urgency is less about the fear of missing out and more about understanding the evolving financial landscape where digital currencies play a pivotal role. Leopard's view on Bitcoin as a solution to issues plaguing our monetary system adds a layer of socio-economic relevance to the discussion. The critique of the traditional monetary system and the potential for Bitcoin to offer a decentralized alternative echoes a growing sentiment among the crypto enthusiasts and financial libertarians. This perspective is not without its challenges, notably in how such a transition could be managed and its implications on global financial stability. You know, how can you ignore this thing? You know, look at these numbers and what what is going to change that's going to make these numbers, what, what's going to make this trend stop? I mean, I always say that, you know, the, what you want to do with, with a business, you want to invest in businesses where dogs are eating the food and there are more dogs showing up all the time. And Bitcoin's <laughs> a classic example of that, right? <laughs> the dogs are eating the food and there are more dogs coming to the party. <laughs> And unless that changes, it's like, you know, uh, why aren't you long this thing? I mean, now, obviously, the waiting is, a, is an issue, you know, and if you're 80 years old and you can't suffer a drawdown, you know, you can't go 100% into it. But, you know, there's there's nobody who can't have 1% or 2% in it. If it goes to zero, they won't be affected. And if it does a 10-bagger or 100-bagger, 10 bagger or 100 bagger, it'll make a meaningful impact on their portfolio. So, um, you know, it's to me, it's, it's a no-brainer. And I... This is going to happen. The other thing that's going to happen, Sam, I think is MicroStrategy is going to get big enough that's going to get put into the S&P 500. So then you'll just have all these, I mean, as you know, the big trend away from active management to passively managed money has, has, has been an enormous trend over the past you know, 10, 15 years. That's just going to continue. Larry Leopard's robust endorsement of Bitcoin paints a vivid picture of an investment landscape on the brink of a significant transformation. Through his insight, he not only champions the pioneering ascents of Bitcoin in the realm of digital currencies, but also underscores the nuanced understanding required to navigate this burgeoning space. His message is clear. Bitcoin isn't just another asset. It's the harbinger of a new era in investment, marked by its astounding resilience and potential for exponential growth. Leopard's narrative is particularly compelling when he contextualizes Bitcoin's performance against the backdrop of historical financial assets. 
by highlighting its unparalleled performance over various timelines, except during brief periods of correction, he challenges asset managers and investors alike to reconsider their portfolio compositions. This argument is powerful because it shifts the conversation from Bitcoin's short-term volatility to its long-term value proposition. In doing so, Leopard doesn't just advocate for Bitcoin's inclusion in investment portfolios, he posits it as an essential component of modern financial strategy. Furthermore, his analogy comparing the Bitcoin's current stage to the internet in 1995 and Microsoft's earlier days offers a poignant perspective on its growth trajectory. These comparisons are not merely optimistic projections, but grounded in a historical understanding of the technology adoption and network effects. They serve to remind us that significant innovations often face skepticism before their true impact is realized. In positioning Bitcoin alongside these technological milestones, Leopard not only elevates its status but also provides a framework for understanding its potential. Leopard's view is a fundamental belief in Bitcoin's capacity to redefine our monetary system. This belief is grounded in a critical analysis of the historical monetary policies and a vision for a future built on sound money principles. His critique of the departure from the gold standard and the current monetary system's flaws is not just an academic exercise. It's a call to action for a societal shift towards more stable and equitable financial foundations. Just the simple math, 300 trillion you know, financial assets, you know, 1.4 trillion Bitcoin, do the math. What piece of that 300 is going to come after the 1.4? I mean, the 1.4 is going higher. It has to. I mean, I wrote a paper in 2018 about this, and at the time, Bitcoin was worth 140 million. So it's done a 10 bagger since, you know, since 2018. And because it was at 6,000, 6,900 when I wrote that paper. And, you know, the other thing on these ETFs, it's interesting is that money's been coming over on the ETFs and that's a good thing. It's been driving the price higher, but you know, it's still, it, these institutions take time. They don't do things quickly. It, it takes time to, to, to filter in. And here's a data point that I think people might find interesting. We have a couple of clients, one of whom has an account at Morgan Stanley. And he went to his Morgan Stanley broker and he said, you know, I want to buy some Bitcoin ETF. I want to buy, you know, Fidelity or something. And the broker said, no, you can't do that. We're restricted. You know, even on unsolicited, we can't buy it um, for you. We do have our own product, which takes some of the volatility out, blah, blah, blah. You know, pay us 100 bips, you know, typical sleazy <laughs> Wall Street thing, right? Buy our thing, not the real thing, right? And then, then another client of ours was uh, has an account at Edward E. Jones, which is, you know, Kind of a high-end um, retail brokerage kind of boutique -y, but a lot of people with a fair amount of money in the united states use them same story he went to his edward e jones broker said you know buy me some of this bitcoin and i said sorry it's restricted we can't do that for you so now i think that's going to change because what's going to happen is you know morgan stanley and edward e jones are going to realize that if we don't let our clients buy this they're going to leave us you know mm -hmm. um and and so but but the point is